Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to One Cast Fishing. It's your host, Ben. I'm coming back at you today with another sonar video, and today's sonar video is about side imaging. I've got my side imaging up here. I'm going down this creek channel, and I'm scanning off to the left and my right of my boat, looking for brush piles, rock piles, structure, drop-offs, because that's what side imaging is really good for. It's really good to be able to see the structure a lot more of the water column without having to go directly over it. But the thing is, just like all the other sonars we've talked about, it's, it's, not, it's a 2D representation in a 3D environment. So if you know this technology and the science and how those signals come out and how those pictures generated, you can be a lot more efficient on the water. So stay tuned, let's get in, let's talk all about side imaging sonar. Hey, welcome back to the channel. As I said in the intro, today's topic of discussion is going to be side imaging sonar. It is a the fourth video in my sonar series. It's been a couple weeks since I did one. If you haven't seen the other videos, I recommend you go to check them out. They are we talk about the basics of sonar, or how they all sonars operate, regardless of the type you're using: side imaging, down imaging, uh, traditional sonar, etc. Then we got into the details on down imaging and then traditional sonar and how you can use that information, how they operate, how that signal is sent and returned to become actually more precise and more efficient on the water. And you can understand your coverage areas. So I recommend you go check them out. I'll, I'll, they should be swiping across the cro uh, top here and I'll link them down in the description below, but make sure you check them out. I should say, even though I recommend you check them out, let's do a quick little recap uh, before we get into side imaging. So, Got my transducer here. You know, all sonars operate the same way. They send out a radio wave, uh, a particular frequency or a set of frequencies. The radio waves bounce off an object. It could be structure, a tree, a fish, or the lake bottom, river bottom, and it returns to the transducer with that sonar echo. Based upon the intensity of that return and how long it takes helps your sonar software display the image you see on screen. Now, traditional sonar, it looks like a cone of coverage. Again, that screen doesn't differentiate where that object is in the cone. It could be anywhere within that basically a circle on the bottom. Down imaging, when it comes out, it looks like a triangle. So it, def it doesn't differentiate between if that image is directly below the boat or directly to the left and to the right of the boat. So again, I recommend you checking out those videos to understand that specifically. But now let's talk about your side imaging. As we probably all know, Side imaging uses those radio waves and they, it shoots to the side of the boat. So you can go, go down the bank, or not even down the bank, go down the middle of a channel and you can see off to the left and to the right. You can see some of the manufacturers say up to 200, I think now 400 feet. Realistically, I think it's a lot less than that. I usually keep mine on about 70 to 100 feet depending on how deep I am. And you, you end up getting those crystal picture-like images where you can see the weed lines, brush piles, schools of fish. It's pretty awesome technology. And again, it's because side imaging is using extremely high frequencies. When it first came out, you're using 455 kilohertz, then 800 kilohertz. Uh, Muhammad birds, I think, use 1.2 megahertz, right? The mega imaging. And I think Garmin with the ultra high def has gone to that as well. So extremely high frequencies, which means a lot of detail when you're looking out to the side of the boat. And, we're, and that's very useful because we can scan a lot more water, we can eliminate areas that don't have bait, don't have good structure, and then we can key in on, on places that we can fish. I really like using it if I'm if I'm got a lot of boat docks on a lake. So I'll, I'll go down out in front of the boat docks and scan, and what I'm looking for is brush piles to the front or the side of the boat dock that adds an additional piece of cover the fish could be on that's different than a lot of other boat docks out there. So that's just one one way side imaging can help. Okay, so I've got my side imaging transducer here. Now this is a different transducer that I've used in my previous videos. This is actually off my old Garmin 93. And it's about seven inches long, as you can see. I think my GT54 transducer is about five or six inches. So they've gotten a little shorter over the years. But ultimately, this radio signal is gonna come out from the sides of these transducers out into the water column, bounce back. And that's how you get those images to the left and right of the transducer. Now because of that, just like down imaging, that signal is gonna be paper thin. It's really gonna be no wider than this transducer. 
So again, it's a slice of the water column and in, in, in the sense that it's like down imaging that way, it's just to the off to the left and sides of the boat. Again, it helps generate those, those crystal clear images. Okay, so I've got my uh, side imaging transducer turned back as it would be on the boat. So you have to keep in mind when this signal comes out of the transducer, it's not creating a box. It's not going out 90 degrees and straight down, back under and back up. No, it comes out at an angle. You have to look in your manufacturer settings, but that angle could be 87 degrees, it could be 82 degrees from the surface. You just have to understand what that is and get in your, again, your owner's manual, look up, look up what model you have. Again, it comes out at an angle, and I'll put this up on the screen here, shoots to the left and to the right of the boat. You also have to look at your manufacturer and the model you have that your screen may try to incorporate some of your down imaging picture. Because if I throw the down imaging up here, you can see, okay, we've got close to 180 degrees of coverage to the other side of the boat and down below the boat. But that's the reason why, if you look on your, your side imaging screen, you've got your left and your right, and you've got your, your lines down the middle that uh, tell you where the transducer is. That's where your boat is. And it's black. That's the water column there. Because this, it's actually shooting to the left and right of the boat, that's why sometimes you might see an image that looks below the boat on your side imaging screen but doesn't show up on your down imaging or traditional sonar. So you have to keep them in mind. It's a very similar principle applied to um, when you're looking at your traditional and down imaging and why you might see an object on one and not the other. So again, just because something looks like it's below the boat in your side imaging doesn't mean it's, it's below the boat. Uh, it, it's still going to be off to the left and to the right. So one thing about side imaging here that's different than maybe your down imaging or traditional sonar is as, as, as you're scanning along, you may see a lot of dark areas. It may be real bright and then dark. And there's a reason for that. The signal is coming out of the transducer. It hits an object, a rock, a brush pile, um, or even a ledge for that matter. Then it goes black. And then eventually, at some point, it starts getting your normal color again. The best way to describe what is happening is we've all been out in the evening when the sun's low in the sky. Maybe the sun's off to, to your west, so you're looking north, it's off to your left. And you look to your right and there's a dark shadow there. That sunlight's hitting you and you're blocking it, so that sun's not getting directly behind you. But as you look further and further on, there it is. You can start seeing light again. The same thing's happening again. Just like when the sun is low in the sky, the signal's coming out slightly down and to the side of the transducer, so slightly at a downward angle. That object is, that, that signal is going to hit an object, a brush pile, a rock. Most of that signal is going to hit that object and return back to the transducer, that sonar echo. That's why you usually have a really bright spot there, and then it gets dark in those shadows. Same thing applies with the ledge and drop off. That signal is going to continue. And then it's hitting the bottom, so you see that normal, normal color there, whatever color palette you have it on. And then the contours drop off, but that signal continues, and it's not hitting the bottom. So that's why you get your dark area again with that water column. Now what's important about these dark areas when you're, when you're scanning along is that you need to look for little, little bright dots in there. You see little bright dots in there, there's going to be fish. And that's because that signal's hitting an object, it's being blocked out, but up above that, where that signal is still continuing in the water column, there's these dots there. So that, that signal is hitting those fish. Especially, this is especially true, and you can really see it on drop-offs, ledges, and creek channels. You should mark that spot, go back and fish it. That's usually what I'm looking for a lot of times on my side imaging, is I'm going to look for those dark areas where that signal is being blocked. I'm going to look to see if there's fish in there. If there's a significant population of fish, what I'll do usually is I'll then mark it, go over it with my down imaging traditional sonar, make sure I'm dialed in the spot, make sure it's the species I want, and then I'll stop and fish it. So using the, using the, show, uh, the sonar shadows to your advantage can be very beneficial of sonar, and it's one of the key reasons why I like using this technology. Hey, so I know this is a video on... Um, the technology behind side imaging sonar and, I, and I've kind of laid it out and if you've taken watched my other videos and you probably understand the principles now of how this is operating I haven't gotten to the discussions about different manufacturers specifically and how do you adjust your settings and all but I will mention if you're looking to get a side imaging unit you got to buy the biggest screen that you can afford um, I found that nine, nine inches for me is a minimum 
and that's that's if I'm only using side imaging on it. And it's because when you split that screen in half and you're looking to the left and right of the boat, now you're only getting, if you're a nine inch screen, four and a half, four and a half inches. So although your technology, they say you can, you can look out to 100 feet, 200 feet, the, the less screen you have, and then that means the less pixels you have, it means the less clear that image becomes. So best recommendation I have is whatever the you can afford, buy the biggest screen with the most pixels you can get because you really enjoy that with your side imaging. Even if you have to go budget, or you know what, even if you don't have to go budget, this is just a tactic you can use, and I, and I still use this sometimes on my larger screens. Maybe I'm not fishing the rower docks, as, as I mentioned earlier, or at least if I did it right, I mentioned it earlier. I'm looking for those brush piles or other structure around those docks. These docks could be deep water docks, they could be shallow water docks, but ultimately anything away from the docks on the other side of the boat, I don't care about. So what I can do, I can go on my settings, and if I am going down this way, behind me here, and the rower docks is on my right, I will set my, my side imaging to only look at the right of the boat. So now I have the full screen on my, my sonar display looking to the right on sound imaging. So actually I can go out further and look further, increase the distance on there and still have a lot of detail. Um, that's one way you can use that if you know you want to keel in on some boat docks, maybe it's a contour line you want to, you want to travel along to, to key on the structure. Once you identify kind of the, the depth the fish are at, you can do that. I think you could start de uh, marking waypoints and pieces of structure you want to come back and fish. So that is a tactic you can use, and I, and I use that as well. Um, even on my 10-inch screens, I will use that when I'm keying in on certain pieces, uh, certain ways I want to fish. Hey, so hopefully you guys learned something today. I'm, I'm wrapping up this video here. Again, it's really about the basic concepts of how side imaging works. That's what this series of sonar has been on, is understanding the technology, how each one is a little bit different, how traditional sonar, down imaging, side imaging, how they send those radio waves out and return it. Because if you're running all three on one or two screens, it doesn't matter. If you're running all three, you understand those principles, those areas of coverage, you understand those, those cones of coverage, you can mark waypoints, identify structure, kind of be more precise and dial in exactly where it's at so that your first cast, you can hit that piece of cover. Uh, so that's what this series is really um, designed to focus on is understanding those principles. Again, there's a lot of videos on how to adjust your settings, uh, how to read your graphs. And I may do some of those in the future because I got experience on the Garmin's, on the Hummingbirds. I might do a couple of reviews of those systems, but Right now, this, this series is, has been focused on the technology and the science behind these different sonar capabilities. So again, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, you comment. Let me know any ideas, if, if you got any of any sonar videos that you want to see in the future, because I'll, I'll definitely do it. I like, I like doing this. I like getting out playing on these systems. I use them a whole lot. So, so once again, I appreciate you watching. Um, make sure you check out the other sonar videos. Check us out at onecastfishing.com. Get your jigs, and uh, with that, Go out there, have some fun, catch some fish, use your sonars. Remember, a lunker is just one cast away.